In today's video, I'll be unboxing a new watercolor sketchbook. The sketchbook was sent to me for testing and as soon as I opened it, I couldn't wait to try it. And then I thought, how about the real-time sketching and painting video? You did enjoy the real-time tutorials that I published here on my channel when we reached 10k subscribers, which was just a couple of months ago. And even though we have no milestone to celebrate right now, I would like to do these real-time sessions here too, besides the ones that are available on my Patreon. Let me know if you enjoy that kind of content and let's dive into unboxing. One last info, my sketching process is usually about an hour and painting might be even two hours, so I have to split the video into the sketching part and you can expect the painting part next week, also in real time. So I've got this beautiful package, not today actually, it's been sitting in my studio packed like this for maybe a week or two even because I did not have time to open it. I was swamped with work so I didn't want to tempt myself but now's the time. Let's open it together. It's supposed to be a watercolor sketchbook that was sent to me by this company. I will put their link into the description down below and I have to thank them very much for letting me try their product so let's see I don't want to damage it it is packed so carefully A box in a box but you know you have to be careful because these things they get damaged and here it is there is a couple of stickers I'm a pro Definitely. <laughs> I'll try to feel like a pro. These are probably just samples of different paper. This is Archie's paper, Fabriano Artistico, CP, white. Yeah, I'm very familiar with this paper. We use tons of it during workshops. This is, yeah, Fabriano, it's a hot press. And Sounders, yeah, all these papers I have lots of experience with, but thanks so much, this is lovely. I don't know if that comes with packaging every time. I, I don't think it does, but this is a nice touch. I can show these two people during workshops to help them see differences and also help them choose maybe to pick the watercolor paper that would fit them the most. And now this is the final layer. I am I'm probably just gonna use like fingers to get rid of the cellophane. I don't want to damage the cover or the block itself with the knife. looks nice this band it is for the sketchbook but it's not part of the sketchbooks if it was part of the sketchbook then I would not lose it I know the way I am I just have mess all around I have like three or four bags that I switch things to and I'm gonna lose this one I'm gonna try not to but this sketchbook is handmade the dimensions are 17 by 25 centimeters i will put a link to the exact product so that you can check more information about it into the description down below in case that you want to check it out yourself and what i know about it is that the sketchbook contains fabriano artistico paper in cp which means cold press surface and it is 300 gsm as a proper watercolor paper should be and i already know that and Fab Fabriano Artistico is 100% cotton paper. The paper should not be a surprise for me. Just gonna put this aside. So here's like an instruction about how to use the rubber band and you can actually fix your painting tools or drawing tools against the sketchbook as you go, so that's nice. I might be able to actually fix it and just stick it here so that I don't lose it. 
but it's a good idea. Sketchbook Anatomy. This is so cute. I've never seen such a thing. I'm gonna have to study up on this later. New Extraordinary Sketchbook. I actually can't wait to use this one. This is one paper that's free and the rest is a lovely binding and a lovely paper with that beautiful smell of a fresh and new paper. One thing I have to say straight from the beginning, it is not too hard to make the sketchbook open. You just need to press a little bit and then it more or less stays open, so it lays flat without troubles. Like if you have the binder clips, which I actually use quite often, yeah, something like this, then you can just... I don't even need two of them and it really lays flat so my first impression is that this really is a high-end sketchbook that is well made i am really tempted to try it out so that we have a video that's not only unboxing but also trying to paint something let's not start with the first page because that's always so intimidating i'm trying to figure out for weeks like what to put straight to the first page so that i don't mess it up and the pressure is just so incredibly high my sketchbooks are messy and sketchbooks get messy let's accept that it's supposed to be for experimenting this artwork is probably not gonna hang on a wall and so I try not to be too timid with my sketchbooks. Of course, I'm still gonna get upset if I mess it up. You can always just place and stick some sort of painting from a free sheet of paper and cover up the mess. All right, so I'm gonna paint to a second page. For now. So I was quickly checking a folder with references that I have on Pinterest and I will link the entire folder down below. I just wanted to pick something quickly because you wouldn't believe the time that I can spend on Pinterest just looking through photos and trying to pick the one that perfectly represents my mood at that point. And I swore to myself that I'm not gonna do that anymore because that's just a time waster. We need to practice, we need to sit down and sketch anything. Not anything, but since I already already have a selection in that folder of things that I liked. We need to sketch anything that I like more or less. I picked this like Tibetan girl. The face is so nice and lovely. Just gonna draw this quickly and it has a pop of color here and there and that's that's all that I would love to fit on that page. First I have to decide if the face is gonna be covering this part or not but probably could make it work if I have face here in this part and then have the, the shirt with that lovely design around the collar and those jewels hanging in here yeah that could work probably that would be the best for this one like my sketching can be very chaotic but whatever i do in the first stage of the drawing process is just planning where the large shapes are gonna go Now I have to assign where the face features are going to be positioned. I'm trying to make the face more or less symmetrical. And then like one third of the face is going to be more like this. One third of the face is going to be the forehead area. Then more or less, because this is still a child, so with children you have 
proportions that are slightly different than within adults and children depending on the age but they might usually show a bit more of the forehead and the features are softer so I try to just mark the position for the nose here and then roughly this doesn't have to be perfect just gonna position the mouth I don't quite do the entire construction of the face, I just more or less place the features intuitively. And for example, I work with what the shapes remind me of. The nose, it reminds me of an oval. And when I draw lips, I always draw either ovals or circles that represent the cushiony parts of the lips. And then I just draw around them to get the final shape so here are the, the lips and the nose we've got marked already this is the X and there's gonna be this space between two eyebrows and here in this part these are going to be those sockets for the eyes here is one brow the eyebrows they will be more chaotic and less precise than in an adult woman. This part always gets a lot of shadow because here is a bone that stands out from the face and then there's a dip into the eye socket. So here always gonna be a part that's more dark and you can find more or less, we need to do the line now that both eyes will line on and then here's gonna be the tear duct or the inner corner of the eye and the outer corner of the eye and that's how i find where the eyes are positioned Okay, so usually I'll just check mistakes at this point. So I've got the face a little too wide. That's the mistake that I do quite often. And then the ears. The ears usually start where the nose ends and they end where the eyebrows are. So somewhere in here. We don't need to see the entire a silhouette of the ears because the hair is covering it okay and then we need to sketch where the hair is gonna go She's got something on her head, but I don't know what it is. Can't identify it, so I'm not gonna draw it. Because I would probably just have to make the entire thing up. All right, and the color, we can sketch the color now. I 
I don't need to be like too precise. I have to say I have no patience for the details of the clothes and I need to work on that probably. I have no opinion about how many details should clothes have. I did not experiment with that. That was not a thought yet that was occupying my studies. But I need to find out because more and more of the like beautiful prints of the shirts and clothes are sneaking into my work lately and probably have to think about this. Things. But I just get super bored when I'm supposed to like paint details and buttons and stuff. I don't know why. I like to paint nature much more than buttons and fabric. Probably I should practice more. But you know, if you want to do a study, then is it important to paint every single button? I don't think so. But some of these buttons are important. Yeah, that looks nice. It's so nice. Gonna have to probably use a golden watercolor or a gold leaf. I have a fake gold leaf somewhere. Maybe I should try it for this one because it has so many like gold embellishments that I maybe it would be worth to paint them. There is one more. I have the head going too far. Where's my eraser? Yeah, this is a watercolor paper that I do not wish to damage. So, if you missed my video about erasers and how important they are when you are dealing with a sketch on a watercolor paper, then you should check it out and I will link it down below. But I have this dust free, this is a very soft eraser for lines that I really want to get rid of altogether, but then I'm gonna be using a kneaded eraser to lighten the sketch up. Then I have another thing and that is a broom. I do not like to touch the paper as much. If it's possible to avoid that, then I'm gonna try. I'm just gonna quickly check for proportions and find mistakes. So first of all, I should really count that these are like very cushiony parts of the portrait. These are the cheeks and the child, it really has prominent cheeks like this. So I should try to be more delicate about them. I try to make the silhouette of the face, respect them a little more. Then, then the lips, they are softer than what I sketched. A little softer. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yeah, and they don't go as far. Alright, and as for the eyes, I think I made them a little too apart, so I need to just move them slightly. And let's now just sketch a little bit of the eyebrows so that I can see where it needs to be placed. And this girl, she has the nostrils. These parts, they get a little more prominent than what I'm used to. And I would like to keep that because it might be an important feature. But I love it. I love what it looks like. Noses are so much fun to sketch and paint. Maybe it's time to check the sketch again. I've already explained this in another video of mine, but if you just quickly snap a picture of your sketch and then go quickly back and forth, then you can see the result. I mean, you can see the differences. 
I'm not trying to sketch it so that it looks exactly like the reference, but would like to keep some of the features. And okay, the forehead is still a little too, too wide. Yeah, I really like my sketch this way. I'm not gonna try to detect whether it's exactly like the reference anymore because yeah. if my goal was to paint it photorealistically, then I would either trace the photo or probably just use the grid method. So this is my sketch and I now need to lighten it with the kneaded eraser a little bit. So the kneaded eraser is a very soft eraser insanely soft uh, it might not get rid you of all the graphite but it definitely gets the excess off of your page and you know graphite smudges it smudges a lot and uh, you can tell from my hand being dirty pencils that are marked as age which means hard they smudge less and the B pencils like I have two B or four B here they smudge more no matter what pencil you are using, you're gonna have to get rid of excess graphite if you don't want it to be smudged with water once you start to paint. So I'm just now gonna lighten the sketch, but I still see clearly what is on the page and where the lines should go. And I still have like one more step in front of me and that is to make certain lines bolder with 2B pencil. So I'm just gonna do that now. So this last part of the process includes me drawing with a 2B pencil. That's gonna be the part in which I will make certain lines more important because when I sketch, my sketch is showing a lot of lines at one place and then when I paint I have to make a decision where is the edge of that structure or shape and I don't want to make so many decisions while I paint because I'm going to have different kinds of decision on my mind such as color and tone and so I want to solve this problem while still being at the sketching stage and that is where exactly is the, the end of that shape. Just gonna do that now. So I would like to make sure that I know where the ear ends, where the face ends exactly. And this line is gonna look nice. So that's what I'm going for. I want to have it clean and good looking. This is the color structure and here is the, the end. Like if you were 
doing your sketch on a separate piece of paper and then would transfer the sketch to the watercolor paper then this is the stage that you would still do directly to your watercolor paper but the first one the one where i'm sketching with two h pencil you would do on a separate sheet of paper but i already kind of feel like I know what sort of pressure I need to use not to disrupt my watercolor paper too much but lately I've been sketching a lot directly to the watercolor paper and that makes maybe that makes the drawings and the paintings look more spontaneous since I don't trace a lot obviously my own sketches but like she has this weird hairstyle here but I'm just gonna probably simplify it. I really couldn't care about drawing hair strands and paint hair strands because it takes so much time and I don't find it rewarding at all whatsoever. Just gonna maybe do some of them like float around a little more than others. And I want to know exactly where these eyes are. Yeah, the eyebrows are a little more messy than what I'm used to when I'm sketching like adult ladies. because the nostrils they're not so open because the angle in which the photo is not a hundred percent from the front but slightly from the top if you look at a person through the chin then the nostrils they get like really open and large from that angle but this is quite the opposite. I like the nose. Then now what's left for me to sketch? Is the mouth. So another thing is the color goes like this. And then here's some other part that's more important, but we can sketch the details later on. I just need the silhouette to place the colors roughly where they should go. So here is one like, larger piece of jewelry, whatever that is, and a smaller one. And then there is this bit. This is the large one. Here I'm again gonna be a little more precise.
Again, it's gonna be loose and we get lost. And these are just smaller ones, less dominant, so they're gonna be looser, sketched, just enough so that I know where to place different colors. And okay, like this thing is stressing me out, so I'm gonna sketch it a bit more. And observe it a little bit from the reference. They might look something like this. I've got the earrings, so let's sketch those. And I don't quite see very well what the earrings actually look like in her ears. So I'm gonna improvise a little and we'll probably have to invent some shapes just to make it more clear in my picture. There's a larger part here, that's probably it, don't need to do more. This larger part, it has like a bottom and a top that will probably use the gold or metallic paint for that earring. So that's my sketch, I can't wait to paint it. I hope that you like it and maybe I will not mess it up completely. Let's see in the other part of this video. <laughs> if I didn't split this video into two parts, it would take ages, so please bear with me. Let's call this the sketching part and the other one will be the painting part. So I'm just gonna go do some color selection and we'll prepare my palette and we'll paint this together shortly. And I'll see you in the second part of the video in just a few days. Mm -hmm.